tribulations of segregation and discrimination. This educational tradition has been repeated throughout the so-called African-American hamlets of Fayette County and beyond, in spite of the odds. To those brothers who are Alpha brothers, he is too, but I don't carry too long. Nevertheless, I proudly present to you Dr. Rupert Grant Seals, graduate of the Cady Town Rosenwald Elementary School.
I didn't know what else to do, so I started just unwrapping the toilet paper. It was in some kind of fixture. And that took too long. I was out there about 15 minutes. And uh, she sent somebody out to see me. I think it was Junior Harris. I don't know. And so she brought me, he brought me in. I was never trusted again for a manual task anymore. The, the building was always well painted. And Mr. Bud Smith, who lived a couple of doors in that direction, uh, would start the fire early in the winter months. We boys would have to keep it going during the day. I believe there was a pile of coal in a small building in the back. Was there a building for that? It was a coal. Okay, all right. In the rear of the main building was a kitchen. That's what I call the kitchen. It looked bigger then. It looked small today. Uh, Mrs. Luella Morton Smith, uh, Mr. Bud's wife, would do the cooking. She had USDA donated food. During recess, we would play with tennis balls on that side of the building, on the north side. The north side had no windows, so with tennis balls and no windows, it was safe to play ball over there. I remember Junior Harris always playing catcher. Stand up, Junior. Stand up. <laughs> he always played catcher. The ball would frequently go over into the property next door belonging to the park. We younger boys always played in the field and would race to see who could retrieve the ball first. We had no playground equipment. And Mr. Parks was a professional farmer and farm properties away from home. All the properties in Caton Town ranged from roughly a half acre to five acres. Mr. Parks had about two acres. Everyone owned their property. They were purchased following the Civil War on an installment basis. Caden Town was surrounded by farms ranging from 200 to 500 acres. At the end of my first year, my parents attended the year-end school program along with the rest of my brothers and my older sister. Mrs. Fuller told the teacher Mrs. Fuller, the teacher rather, told his dad and mom that I did outstanding work, which at grade one was equivalent to A's. On the way home, dad had threw me up in the air and caught me. It was quite a thrill. It was the first time he did that. It was also the last time he did that. <laughs> Persons in those days, or parents in those days, were not very demonstrative unless you needed punishment. So when I needed punishment, he was very demonstrative. Doris, our older sister, who was attending the city Russell School with our dad, who was principal of Russell School, finally began to attend Caden Town Rosenwald in the middle of my first grade year. I forgot whether it was fall or spring. While she had been attending Russell since kindergarten, right. when our family lived in Lexington, the city school board ruled she must go the county school. Right. So, Darsh, you were promoted in quality. <laughs> <laughs> but you were promoted to a quality school. You know? <laughs> the incident was a repeat of what happened to our dad when he tried to attend Russell in the 19-teens, then the only public high school for Negroes in the city or county. Then another story I want to tell you. Um, we used to have field days at some of the other Rosenwald schools. And my first one was at the Cold Town Rosenwald School at the end of the, my first year. I had a little accident, six years old, you know. Mrs. Fuller was rather disgusted. She asked if I had weak kidneys. <laughs> The Cold Town Rosenwald School was a two-room building compared to our one-room building. Their property was also about twice as large. Mrs. Fuller had the girls do a Hungarian dance by which they had practiced for at least two months. Their parents had made Hungarian dresses for them. 
Delane out there, which we call Delane, now called Caden Lane, defined Caden Town. The paved roads, Todd Road and Liberty Road, uh, define the boundaries. Now, as you may already know, Todd Road is named after Mary Todd Lincoln, who grew up in Lexington and spent, uh, before she married uh, Mr. Lincoln, uh, lived here quite a bit of her life. The lane out there was a gravel street, and the county would re-gravel it about every two years or so, sometimes every three years. In the meantime, it would develop serious potholes, which we learned to step around in our walk to school. Why are you shaking your head for? <laughs> in the meantime, after heavy rain, it was difficult to get around those potholes. They finally widened the lane and paved it and provided curves in 1979. But we grew up with the narrow gravel street. Mrs. Fuller was always on time to school. She would pass our house every morning in her car at 8 o'clock. You could practically set your watch, if you had one, by, by her. We did not have to be at school as students until 8.30. There was a grocery store on the corner of Liberty and Todd Roads. It was owned by the Adamses. While we secured our main groceries from Lexington, our mother would send us to Adams Grocery from time to time. Every now and then, and the now and then were very much separated, she would let us buy candy or pop. Now I want to do a little bit, and I'm just giving you flavors of what our experiences are because the elders want me to be here all day. <laughs> Two years after the Civil War, as you probably already know, Owen Caden, a developer, purchased for $2,800 a property which became Caden Town. Caden Town was, is one of the many rural hamlets dotted around Fayette mm -hmm. County, providing property and homes for rural blacks who worked on the surrounding farms and businesses. I remember that our older sister's classmates, the Harvard <coughs> twin girls, had a father who for many years was the groom for Man of War at Calumet Farm. They lived in a similar hamlet called Maddox Town. In our growing up years, several Caton Town men, for instance, worked on the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad, which passed close to Caton Town and were said to earn a good wage. Several others worked at Hamburg Place, a famous horse farm, which abutted the CNO Railroad. The farm fronted several miles further northwest on the Winchester Road. Hamburg Place sponsored a baseball team with the same name, and there was a professional type ball diamond situated on its property in the vicinity of the CNO Railroad and Brighton Road about a mile from Caden Town. Several young men from Caden Town were on the team. Our great-grandfather, Warren Taylor, and his wife, Susan Taylor, were early members of Haven Methodist Episcopal Church. Those of you who are aware know that it's on the other corner over there. They were almost charter members, joining a year or two after it was organized. My recollection now that it was organized in 1872. That's probably what must Yeah. Uh, our dad's mother, Elsie Taylor, the daughter of Warren and Susan, married Ulysses Grant Seals, a carpenter, and thereby initiating the Seals clan. Ulysses is credited with building most of the houses in Caden Town during that era. While no record exists, those who knew, such as Carl Talbot here, tell us that there was a school that preceded the Rosenwald School. From things I've read about other communities in the South, it was probably a building raised with resources to which the Cadentonians had access or borrowed. It probably wasn't formally finished on the inside and perhaps not even on the outside. Also, don't forget, the local Cadentonians had to raise their part of the funds to build the Rosenwald School. The 
Cape Town Neighborhood Association and other agencies, which Al has already uh, alluded to, are to be commended, commended for assisting 